Well, welcome. I hope you're well. I'm pleased to have you back again. I would like to show you something that I think you might find intriguing. Take a look. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, as I saw, and I hope as, as you did as well, uh, but the first time I saw that video, what struck me the most was how subtle, but also how sophisticated um, the video was and how much it conveyed to me um, about life about relationships, about people, about ourselves. And I'm reminded by something that Steve Jobs said. Uh, he said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. So you have to trust that somehow the dots we all connect. You have to believe in something, your gut, faith, uh, or whatever. And as I saw that video, what came to mind, and what I hope to convey in a few words, because I believe the, the video said so much um, in such a short period of time, what I'd like to convey is to put you as the one on that piece of paper. Think about yourself as the one on a piece of paper. Every day we get the opportunity to write a new script. We're given the tools we need, the ruler, the pen or the pencil. The pen and the pencil represent things that are perhaps incidental to who you are. In this particular instance, let me use a few examples. The features you were born with, the melanin, melanin content of your skin, your gonads, sometimes your height, uh, your physical attributes and features. These were things, even your IQ, these were things that you had no part in choosing. Those are the tools, but you have the opportunity to draw the lines you wish. And as you draw the lines, you have also the opportunity to connect the dots. What is interesting is whatever you draw, whatever script you formulate and write, you get to play that role. The pencil does not define who you are. The ruler does not define who you are. Although they were very useful in designing and drawing who you are. It doesn't define you, but it plays a part in trying to determine what you draw. The final product that is drawn is up to you. So over the past few sessions, I have talked about observations that I have made with regards to uh, almost the obsession in the West amongst people who are black in talking about their 
race, which I don't find to be a particularly interesting or defining part of an individual. Let me start by saying a few things. Being a man is not necessarily very special or important. It's not a defining aspect um, to anybody, particularly my case. Um, my, my race or my skin color doesn't necessarily make me an interesting person. Gonads and melanin contents, quite frankly, don't define who I am. For you, I would hope that whatever incidental attributes uh, that you have doesn't also define you. You get to define yourself based on how you draw yourself on a daily basis and how you connect with others. So the past few sessions, I talked about the importance of understanding and being sympathetic to the complications and, and how we have evolved over time in the West and how certain questions um, that were asked in the past no longer apply or are perceived in a different way today. The question, where are you from, is what, generally speaking, people ask when they meet you. And as I watched that video, what occurred to me was perhaps there is a, an interesting way that we can learn about other people, but also that we can share to other people about ourselves in a way that is a lot more holistic. Now, the drawing on the video was very simple, but what was fascinating was as you started to move and look at the drawing using different positions or perspectives, then suddenly it was animated. There was something becoming of something so simple. Uh, it grabbed our attention and it grabbed mine, certainly, but also it showed me something that I didn't see when the drawing was on a 2D dimension. Your gonads and your ethnicity or your racial attributes are in two dimensions. Quite boring, which is why I said it's not really, really special to be a man or nothing really special to be a black man. Per se, there is something inherent in every one of us, the spirit, um, something that we can't see, but that animates each and every one of us. That is the unique part of who we are. But we have also been given this intellect, uh, a mind that enables us to generate emotions, that makes life alter our perspectives and also that makes people see those perspectives in an altered way. That is what makes you special. It's the resident within, not what we see without. So in your dealings with people and in your interactions with people, whether you are blue, black, red, yellow, white, indigo, it's important not to use that as a first defining feature in describing your uniqueness. It's important rather than answer the question, where are you from? Or rather than take offense at being asked the question, where are you from? To think about your interactions with people in this way. You have a story. That story is a combination of all the dots in your life that you have had to connect. As you connect one dot to another, you draw a line. The line looked at over time through a particular perspective shows a unique part of you. So your role when you meet people is to start by describing your story, your journey and connect the dots for people. So people leave you having seen not just the two dimensional aspect of you, but a six, a seven, an eighth dimension of how unique your life has been. For example, let's assume that you are in the United States, 
born in the United States and even born of the United States. If I met you and you said to me, well, I was born in Miami, Florida, and I've lived there all of my life. Can you see that that's two dimensions? It makes your, your story quite plain and boring. Whereas, if you said, I was born in the United States, in Miami, Florida, my parents, my mother was an Italian immigrant, my father was from Odessa, Ukraine. Both of them went through several journeys to come to the United States. When they met in a particular location in the States, they moved, they had me as a child. I went to this school. These are my interests. This is what I studied. This is what I have done in my life. And this is where I find myself. In a short few words, you have drawn or you have shown your life in three, four, five, six dimensions. So it's not just about where you were born or where your parents are from. It's not about your ancestry line. And it's certainly not about uh, what you have achieved, although important. There is something important to recognize about telling your story in a profound way. But seeing yourself as an important player in that movie of your life, that you can tell the story in a compelling way so that people can connect to your journey, your struggles, your successes, your ups and your downs, the life you've led, the lives you've touched along the way, and therefore they can see several perspectives of you. Now, this is partly the reason why um, I think it's very important for any individual to, to pursue their dreams and their goals before they begin the journey of either becoming a parent or becoming a spouse, a husband or a wife. Because for most people, if you have achieved nothing in life, then just like the 2D dimensions of the video, whatever defines you or whatever you were defined by, if it's just two lines, will also limit you. A piece of paper with a few lines drawn, that's all you see. It's limited by the fact that its angle is at zero. You change the angles suddenly so you start to see more so i've always said to people it's necessary for you to discover your purpose uh, discover a calling you might have identify problems you want to solve in the world identify perhaps assignments and tasks you want to achieve by specific dates and preferably before you get yourself into a relationship that might forgive me for using this word, kill your dream. Get yourself out there and make a name for yourself. Learn something new. Work for someone, become an apprentice. Learn to become a master in something so that you can say, there is another dimension to my life. I have learned how to weave. I learned how to be an accountant and I did so before I started this very important relationship that makes my life meaningful and certainly before you have kids so that you have different facets to who you are you're a mother you're a wife you're an accountant oh but you were a young woman one one time and you, you can design things you know you play basketball or you play netball or you play football uh, uh, you were a champion back in the day, you wrote poetry, you were in a debate team. These are colours, lines that are drawn to define who you are. You were born in Sunderland, you moved to London, you lived in London for four years, you moved to Northern Ireland, 
You lived there for one year, then you met your partner. And both of you decided to move to the east of England. Now, can you see how rich that story sounds and seems compared to what it would have sounded like if you simply had just two dimensions? You have to tell your story. And when people ask you questions about yourself, don't be offended. People have a very, very weird way of communicating. Most people naturally are not confident, but also most people do not want to be intrusive. And when we think, we think in pictures and we think in words. Most of us have not been trained to be able to transcribe the picture we have in our mind into spoken words. The thoughts we have, we do not present those thoughts as carefully as we should. So, I'm sure you would have been in this position, I have, where I said a few things, and then later on I said to myself, all the things I wanted to say, I didn't. And most of the things I said, I didn't want to say. And what I realized and I learned was sometimes what is in your head and in your mind can only be seen and expressed by the spirit within you. But your word has to become flesh. But there is an art to turning that word into flesh. And there is a craft in knowing how to do so very effectively. You have to learn how to do that. But also you have to be forgiven of people who have not learned how to do that. And as they interact with you, do not hold them to their words. Take the questions that are put forward to you and reframe or rephrase those questions in a way that allows you to tell your story. Keep in mind, if there is one thing I want you to take away from today's session, keep this in mind. Your story will be told. You have a chance to tell your story in the best way possible, in the most sincere way possible, and as honestly as possible. Alternatively, other people will tell your story. What they say about you could be based on perceptions, inferences, speculations, your reputation, and in some occasions, perhaps how you responded to a question that they asked. If you communicate your story very clearly, you're giving people the permission to freeze in time what makes you unique, but also to transmit that information to other people they come across with. So keep in mind, there is more to you than the attributes, physical or non-physical, that you already have. There is more to you with regards to what you've attained academically or professionally. There is more to you with regards to your dreams and your goals. By combining and choosing the right dots to connect and sharing how you connected the dots, you're able to provide a much richer experience of you and more importantly, you are able to provide a much richer account of the life that you have led to people in such a way that they walk away feeling that they've met someone who is unique, interesting, and full of life. Tell your story. If you don't, depending on the perspective or the angle people perceive 
your 2D drawing, you might find that people misunderstand who you are by sight or by interest or by description or by association. Now I hope that that has been useful.